source down the chain. That, so this is science which is related to, this is essentially, in a nutshell, a Ferris, this is called mathematical modeling. It means that you see something in nature, for example, how the brain works. Then you try to represent that thing from the nature using the mathematics. Then mathematics is the language of the things you see in nature. For example, the how your brain works, you can represent it by mathematics. And this is called mathematics modeling. Uh, and essentially, the, the, this exercise that you all do is a kind of a gateway, an introduction to you all guys about mathematical modeling, which is a very interesting topic, and it's good to see it from now this stage. And I choose this particular one for the brain. Then you do not need to use the math. You need to know what the math describes. And when you are done, you have to write it and post it into the science club, the blog. You actually do blogging. By doing that, essentially, you learn how to do the blogging. You put it there, and depending on the quality of your work, it comprises up to 10% of your final mark. Okay. Okay. Now, is it okay? Does it make sense, Ferris? Oh, it makes sense, but... Mm. Okay, nothing. I make sense, I think. Yeah, it, it's good. That's a kind of a first time exposure to see how math represents something out of the textbook. For example, it goes to a brain. It goes to your brain and math uses to describe your emotions, your behavior. It's a very interesting thing, I should say. You see real life of the math. Okay. And who knows, maybe you become that much interested, then you decide to become a neuroscientist, to go to a medical school, to study math, to become computational neuroscientists. You know, it gives, the outcome of that assignment is too much. You, you may find very interesting to become, let's say, as I said, a neuroscientist, which is a very interesting thing in university then. Yeah, I hope it helps, but in case, if you have more questions, please ask me that, okay? Rosa, yes. Felix, uh, huh? Uh, uh, no, I'm talking to you, Felix then, Rose. Ah, okay, okay. Uh, 你们在吗? Ah,我我心太炸了，这是什么东西啊？你们看懂了吗？ Uh. <laughs> <laughs> 就是不需要把那个那个式子理解了，就是你你知道它这个这个猫的是怎么运作的，用文字解释出来就行。然后怎么和怎么和函数，然后和这个，就反正怎么联系的。我甚至看不懂它是干嘛的，我只知道它是有关大脑神经的，没了。对，你就就随便胡扯一点就行。他他是，我我。Let's move on and do something very interesting. In order to start the day, guys, I just want to have a two minutes review, just a two minutes review of the things which we have covered so far about the most fundamental trigonometric ratios. Then we talk about how to solve a right triangle. And that's the plan. Today's plan is to write, to solve, they call it essentially a right triangle, solve a right triangle. Then when we are done, we talk about some real world applications as a homework for you. It's gonna be my X axis is Y is the origin. And in case if you do not see, because I use this tool to, Make a circle, let me adjust this one. I use this tool to make a right circle. I hope you see that because this is in pencil, you may not see that. But remember that's a Cartesian coordinates 
at the center of these Cartesian coordinates, I've drawn a circle, a unit circle, which the radius is one. What we saw before was this, that we said that if I, for example, decide, so far, for example, we talked about, uh, uh, let's, let's talk about this one. We said that if it's gonna be an angle at that point A, we, we, we saw that because this point, point A, is at the circumference of the circle, it has two identity to be recognized. The first identity, if you learned from a couple of days ago, it was its x, y coordinates, which represents where the point is located compared to the x and y. And also, because of the circle, it also shows what? It shows, for example, the angle alpha, which uh, that's what we talked about that a uh, couple of days ago. From this representation, we, we said that the basic thing that we can do is that to come to draw a projection to the x coordinate and read whatever we just read. We say it's going to be our what? It's going to be our x coordinates. And also, at the same time, we saw that we can come and just find this one to the y coordinates and whatever we read from here it shows that it's going to be y this x and this y essentially were these x and y coordinates of the point a but i'm showing that as a projection along the x and y coordinates and we saw that this one is always the angle when you make a projection you see the angle is how much 90 degrees huh that's what we thought. And also, if you remember from the previous sessions that we talked, we were able to define six basic trigonometric identity. The first identity we talked about that was this one. We talked about the sine of the alpha. The sine of the alpha was what? Was the ratio of what? Of y divided by the radius of that circle, y divided by the r, correct? Yes. Do you remember it? Yes. And if you remember, also, we came to decide, talk about something related to the sign. We said that the inverse of the sign, we call that cosecant of the alpha, which we talked about, even about the plotting of this function, which it was essentially the inverse of the sine of the alpha, which is essentially in terms of its ratio, becomes what? Becomes r divided by y. So far, so good? Yes. And also, we talked about the cosine of the alpha. The cosine of the alpha was what? Was this ratio, was the x that you read on the x coordinates as a projections of the point a to along the, 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 the x axis or essentially the x of the point a divided by the r then if you remember from the previous talks that we had we said what we talk about i should say secant of the alpha which is essentially the inverse of cosine of the alpha, which is what? Which is r divided by x. So far, four identities. Right? And also, we talked about, I think I do not have enough space. I may be able to fit this all in one page if I write it there. Let me... Oh. Let me divide this one. And also we talked about the tangent of the alpha, which is the alpha, which was essentially based on the definition. What was that? 
It y was over x. That's so true. It was y over x. Thanks, Rose. And also, we talked about something very relevant to the tangent, which it was the cotangent, cotangent of the alpha, which was essentially 1 over tangent to alpha, which is what? In terms of the ratio, if you inverse tangent, x over y. Huh? Yes, Rose? Yes. Gloria? Yes. yes. Philip and yes. Ferris, everyone is fine? Yes. Awesome. Then, then the thing which we covered so far was these six identities, not identities, sorry, they are ratios. We talked about the sine, cosecant, cosine, secant, tangent, and cotangent of an angle which is at the center of a unit circle. And the unit circle is surrounding the Cartesian coordinates at the point zero there, right? And that was, we talked many, I should say, a couple of days ago. Today is April 23rd, huh? Okay, and now, the thing that you want to do, we are not going to a different direction, but very similar to the thing that we just started today. And this different direction is essentially this one. Uh, this is going to be essentially this one that we're gonna talk about a right triangle. But what do I mean by a right triangle? It means that right now, in order to study the trigonometric ratio of one angle alpha, which represents an angle on a unit circle over a Cartesian coordinates, because for these ones, the thing which we did was this. We had to, as a kind of a tools, we had to construct our angles on a unit circle, which is confined by, I should say, a Cartesian coordinates. Right now, we are gonna just put this aside. We are gonna draw away the unit circle and the Cartesian coordinates. Guys, look at the angle which I have created here. Is it like, a triangle because I have 90 degrees here and I have three lengths with the angle alpha. Do you see that? It's a triangle, is it, isn't that? Yes. That's right, it's a right triangle. I say a right triangle because you see one of the angles in this triangle is necessarily 90 degrees. Then it means that these two angles is gonna be, the sum is gonna be 90 itself that makes the sum of the angles of a triangle 180. Then I'm gonna draw away this unit circle and this Cartesian frame, and I'm just gonna only keep this right triangle. I'm gonna do that on the next page. my okay i'm gonna draw a comparably big triangle Okay, now I have I have this right triangle. Guys, look at this one. Imagine the triangle which I made. It's this triangle which I removed this Cartesian frame and the unit circle 
and I just only kept the right triangle which is left behind. This angle was how much? Alpha. And this one was what? 90 degrees, huh? And this one was the center. And now the other thing which I do is this. I come here, guys, if I just put this angle also, I have another angle, which is gonna, I call this beta. Then now I know that the alpha plus beta becomes how much? 90. That's so true. Becomes 90 or pi over two. Or 90 degrees. Thanks, Rose. And now that's this one here. And now what I'm gonna do at this stage, imagine that we do have only the length. Previously, previously in this section, because we had the Cartesian coordinates that we were referencing our points with respect to these Cartesian coordinates, then it was unavoidably, I was calling the coordinates of that point X and Y. X was this length, Y was this length, correct? Because they were representing your measurements with respect to this Cartesian frame. Huh? And now, the thing which I'm gonna do is this. The thing which I'm gonna do is this. This one was the X previously on the Cartesian frame and the unit circle, and this one was Y. I do not have here anymore a Cartesian coordinate with a unit circle then I do not know if this is, can be X or this can be Y. Imagine that you rotate the unit circle, correct? Then in that case, I'm just gonna give him a regular name. I'm just gonna call this one, for example, this angle, this length, let me pick up a different color. I'm gonna call this length B, and I'm gonna call this length, which previously it was X, I'm gonna call that A. Do you see this? Yes. Do you see this color? Yes. Awesome. And now, if I'm in, in the way of constructing this triangle, if I come here and say, what is the length of the hypothesis for me? How much is gonna be that length? Square root of a square plus b square. That's so true. You use the Pythagorean theorem, huh? That's so true. Then I can just put here for the length of hypothesis, I can say it becomes square root of a squared plus b squared. I use Pythagorean theorem in a right triangle to understand how much is my hypothesis. Any questions guys so far? No. No? Okay. And now, if everything fine with you, I'm just gonna go back again to this paper. If I had my unit circle, if I had, guys, look at that. Look at this right triangle. When I had this right triangle captured inside a unit circle, reference to a Cartesian coordinate, I was able to define these six identities. No, sorry, not identities. I keep saying identities. They are not identities. They are ratios because they are division of two length. I was able to find these six trigonometric ratios, but how about this case? I do not have a right triangle. I do not have a unit, sorry, I do not have a unit circle and I do not have a Cartesian frame. But I know that I have a unit, I have a right triangle, which represents a lot to the triangle which I had captured inside the unit circle with the angles alpha and beta. And I know the length of all the lengths. The question is that, can I come here 
and define again my trigonometric ratio as I defined them previously for the same angle inside the unit circle. In order to do that, the question is yes. We can reproduce the same ratios as what we did before. For example, I'm going to focus on the angle alpha, which I had on the unit uh, ratio, the unit circle. I'm going to start with this. I'm going to say, what is the sign of the alpha? Alpha is this. What is the sign of the alpha, guys? It's going to be, again, the same concept. For the sign of the alpha, you always... Remember previously, you were looking at the y direction. You were dividing the y. You were dividing the y, which it was opposite of the angle divided by the r. And now we follow the same thing. We do not have y here, but we say that, okay, if I want to find the sine of the alpha, I come here to say it's going to be a rule for it. Not anymore, it's going to be the y. It's going to be the rule like that. I come to find the opposite length, the length that the alpha is watching. What is length that the alpha is watching? B. B, correct. It's going to be B divided by what? Square root of A square plus B square. That's so true. I can call it, guys, for convenience, let's call that C. Okay, instead of writing every time I write square root of a, uh, square root of a squared plus b squared, I'm going to call the result as a hypothesis of the right triangle as what? As c, right? Okay, it's going to be the b, and now I'm going to divide it by the hypothesis based on the thing which you learned. On this case, you had y divided by the r, and r for us is the hypothesis, which I'm going to call that c. Then you see that there is no unit circle, there is no Cartesian frame. To get the sine of any angle in a right triangle, you say that you get the opposite length of the angle, which is the angle which the, which the angle is watching. It's watching, look at that, imagine alpha is an i is watching the B divided by the hypothesis, which is C. I have, guys, I have also the same thing. I, can, I have another angle, which is beta, huh? Can I just write what is the sign of the beta? Can I say that? Yes. That's so true. Then in that case, you see the sign of the beta. Remember, guys, previously in the unit circle, we were not able to define the sign. If I define beta here, we were not able to define the sign of that angle. Let's see the restriction. And now I can define the sign of the beta, which again becomes what? The length that the angle is watching. B is watching, beta is watching what angle? What, what length? A. A divided by C. Any questions, guys, so far? No. And now, I come here to define something different. I come here to say what is going to be there now. Secant, no, uh, cosecant of alpha. Because remember, we always, after C sinus, we always talk about the cosecant of the same angle because they are the inverse. Cosecant of the angle becomes what? The inverse of the sine. What is the inverse of the sine? C over B. That's so true. Becomes C over b and also the same thing cosecant of beta 
becomes how much? C over A. So true. Becomes C over A. Now, I move on. I'm going to define the cosine of the alpha. Let me change my color. Cosine of the alpha. How much is the cosine of the alpha, guys? It's going to be the same rule. Previously, in the right triangle, in the unit circle, you had what? You had the x divided by the r. Remember it? Now I do not have the x. Then it becomes the a divided by c. How about the cosecant of the beta? B divided by C. That's so true. Becomes B divided by C. Then you see that for the cosecant, you have for any angle, what is guys, for the alpha, what are the neighboring, I should say, length, which define alpha? A and C, correct? You cannot use the C because C is a hypothesis. Then you use the they call that adjacent length, the neighboring length. For the sine, you were looking at the length which the angle was looking at. For the cosine, you look at the length which is your neighbor. Your neighbor for the alpha is A length. And for the beta, your neighbor is B. Then you define the cosine of these angles of the length of the adjacent length, the neighboring length, divided by the hypothesis. Correct? Any questions? No. No? And now, now I'm just going to talk about the tangent. You know what is the secant of these ones? It becomes the reverse. I'm not going to talk about that. But how about the tangent? I call the tangent of the alpha. The tangent of the alpha, guys, what is the definition of the tangent? Always, the tangent is this. You say that you come here to define sine alpha divided by what? Cosine alpha. That's so true. Cosine alpha. If I put the numerical value, you put the sine alpha B over C, you put for cosine A over C. Then you see that the cotangent tangent of the alpha becomes what? B over A. That's right, B over A. Everyone can see this? I've ever written here. You see the color? Yes. Awesome. Then you see, guys, in a right triangle, the tangent of any angle becomes based on the definition that this is sine over the cosine, then becomes, this is simplified as the length that the angle is watching over the length that it is neighbor to. The same description for, could I should say, tangent of beta. What is the tangent of the beta? The same description becomes the sine of beta divided by cosine, which at the end it leads you to this conclusion to learn that it becomes the angle that the beta, the length that beta is observing, beta is looking at A, divided by the length which is neighbor to B. Then you see that for tangent and Tangent of the angles, you do not include the hypothesis. The hypothesis of a right triangle, this is the relevant term just for the sine and cosine. Correct? Yes. Any questions, guys, so far? No. No? Okay, now I'm going to go to define the last identity. Oh, sorry, the ratio, then we do some practice, then we take a quick break. Okay, now.
Now, look at this one, the same triangle. And now I'm deciding to just define the cotangent of the angle. I saw that what is the cotangent of the alpha. What is cotangent, guys? Based on the definition, it's defined as cosine of the alpha divided by what? By the sine of the same angle. If you put for cosine the ratio of the alpha, which was B divided by C, and the sine, sorry, the, the cosine, which was A divided by C, and the cosine, sorry, I'm, sorry guys, we have to just read the cosine. The cosine of the alpha is A divided by C, divided by the tangent, by the sine, which is B divided by the C, you get for the cotangent of the alpha becomes what? Becomes B, becomes, sorry, becomes A divided by B. And also the same thing for the cotangent of the angle beta. If you follow the same prescription, that the cotangent is the inverse of the sine, you know that the cotangent is the inverse of the sine, then for the cotangent beta, it becomes the laboring length, which is B, divided by the length that the angle is observing, which is going to be the A. Then now, you will see that also from here, you see that, guys, for the tangent of the beta, we had A divided by the B, but for the cotangent of the beta, we have B divided by the A. Then you can see that these two ratios, they are the reverse of each other. Then uh, that's essentially the concepts for uh, these ratios of a right triangle. Guys, any questions so far? Rose? No. Philip? No. Gloria? No. Therese? Not sure. Okay. So you said no, you're not sure. Uh, I, I said uh, I don't have a question. No, oh, fantastic, fantastic. Okay, now, then, now that you know these kind of ratios, let's do an example. Okay, for the first, first basic example that we want to do, you do this. Let me draw this right triangle. which is 90 degrees. Mm. And I tell you, this angle is gonna be alpha. And at the same time, I'm telling you that the sine of alpha equals to hmm, four divided by seven. Guys, everyone is clear so far what happens there? You can see what I have written? Yes. Yeah? Guys, the task right now is this then. Then please spend two or three minutes to visualize the stuff which I have written to find the strategy, then I solve it for you. I said that I have a right triangle, which I pinpointed one angle, which is alpha here. And I said that I know that the sine of the alpha is four divided by seven. And I wanna ask you find the rest of the five ratios for the alpha. 
you find cosine, you find secant, cosecant, tangent, and cotangent. Okay. Okay. Give it a two minutes try, then I solved it for you. Guys, nice, beautiful day, huh? Yes. Okay, anybody's done? Yes. Awesome. How about the others? Ferris, Philip, Gloria? Okay, let's, let, me, let me do that. Then if you are not yet up to this point, you can just follow me and help me to solve it. Guys, for this sign, for this right triangle, I have the sign of the alpha is 4 divided by 7. Based on the definition which I learned from, I should say, the previous page, for this right triangle, you define the sign as a ratio which the numerator represents the length that the angle is observing divided by the hypothesis. Then if I want to use follow this, then I did based on this one, Four should represent this length because four is the length of the of, of the length that the alpha is observing divided by the hypothesis. Hypothesis is going to be seven. Then it's going to be seven. And now, guys, in a right triangle, how many length do I have? Three, mm -hmm. huh? One hypothesis to normal length. <clears throat> if this is four, this is this is seven, this is four. Then based on the sign of the alpha, it gives me a lot of information. Then I can make a huge inference that if the alpha, <clears throat> its sign is this. <coughs> Sorry. If 
if the sign is this, then the conclusion which I can make is this, that uh, this length should be this. Then if I just want to find another ratio, let's say I from here, I just want to come to find the cosine of the alpha. How much is the cosine of the alpha? It's going to be the length which is adjacent to the alpha divided by the hypothesis. I'm going to do this. I'm going to put the 7 as a denominator, which is based on the definition of the cosine of the angle in a right triangle. But I got stuck there. I do not know the length of, let's say, the adjacent length to the alpha. You see? There's a question mark there. But how much is that? Can I find this? If yeah. I know these two length? Yes. Yeah, how much is that, Rose? Square root of 33. Square root of? 33. 33? You mean you have 7 to the power 2 becomes how much? 7 power uh, four, 49. 49? Minus? 16. 16 becomes what? Square root of? 33. That's so true. Thank you. Then we have this one. Square root of 34 for the hypothesis. Then when did you swap? That's for the hypothesis, for the adjacent length for the angle alpha. Then the cosine becomes how much? Square root of 33 divided by seven, because that's the definition of the cosine. The angle, you locate the angle, you come to ask to see what is my neighborest at length, which is gonna be this one, which you find it by using Pythagorean theorem, divided by seven. Now, what is the next step from this? We can also come to find the tangent and cotangent. For the tangent of the alpha, we know based on the definition, either I divide the sine of the alpha, which is 4 divided by 7 divided by square root of 32 divided by 7, or I go back to the my right triangle, and I know that based on the definition that we learned, it's going to be what? It's going to be the length for this angle alpha becomes the length that the alpha is observing which is four divided by the length which is neighbor closest neighbor to the angle alpha which is adjacent to alpha becomes what square root of 33 you can simplify that further i do not do that you can divide you can multiply both numerator and denominator by the square root of 33 we don't do that we keep it where it is and now also, as a very last identity, what is going to be the cotangent of the alpha? Based on definition becomes what? Becomes the adjacent length, the length which is closest to the angle alpha, which is the square root of 33 divided by what? Four. Four, which is the length which the angle alpha is observing. Then you see that, guys, as a conclusion. Any questions so far? No. Thanks, Rose. How about Gloria, Ferris, and Philip? No. No. Okay, great. great. Then, guys, so far, and we are not going before we go for the break, then the thing which we learn is that we do not need to, in order to define the trigonometric ratios, we do not need to stick to a unit circle with the Cartesian coordinates. We can define six trigonometric ratios even for any right triangles into space, not in the unit circle and the Cartesian frame. That's the lesson which we learned today before we go for the break. When we come back from the break, 
we're going to talk more about more implications of the right triangles. Particularly, we're going to have a very important lesson, which is going to be crucial then. Then please, if you have no question, guys, take a break. And now this is 12.10. We come back by 12.25 then. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Enjoy your break and I see you soon then.
Hello, everyone. Are you back? Not yet. Hello. <laughs> yes. Okay, you're back. <laughs> I yes. thought no one is here. <laughs> okay, now let's catch up with the stuff. Okay, guys, please, if you are back, say your name. Rose. Gloria. And? And Ferris. Ah. And? No one. <laughs> okay. Guys, and now we just want to do one more example, uh, essentially uh, to wrap up the things that we have seen. If you remember guys, when we started the session today, we said that the main topic for the day is to solve a right triangle. What do I mean? We have two words to solve the right triangle. We know the right triangle. That's a triangle like that, which one of the angles is normal, 90 degrees then. What do we mean by solving a right triangle? For example, before we go for the break, we solve one special case of the triangles. We only knew the sign of the alpha and if we were able to find the hypothesis, all the lengths, and all the angles. And now, the thing is that we just want to apply the same concept on a different scenario. It's something very similar to the thing which we have done. And the main goal for that is that we just want to solve this right triangle. It, mean, it means that we are going to find all the three angles and all the three lengths. And that's the plan. But the strategy here is like that. I'm just going to give you this example. And I give you the angle which I have here is 30 degrees. Guys, can you see this color or no? Yes. Is it fine? Okay. And I have 33, 30 degrees on that angle. And I have the length of this triangle, which is being watched by... I should say by this angle is, let's put this 17.9. Huh? I give you this one. I just want you to please spend a couple of minutes to think of it. That you have a right triangle. And the plan is that to find these two length and these two angles based on the things which you have seen so far. Give it a minute to try. Then I just solve that question for you.
Okay. Anybody's done that? Hello. Yes. You're done? Yes. Okay, great. Okay, now let's uh, let's do that okay guys as i said the plan is to solve this right triangle how to solve it i'm just going to do this i'm just going to come here and say in order to solve the right, right triangle i need to find two other angles and two other length in order to do that i have one clue i know i assume that i just call this length which I do not have it. I call this length A, and I put this length, which is my hypothesis, I call this C. I have no idea what they are. And also, I put this angle, which I have here, I call this, let's say, beta, as the angle which I know. Then even though before I start to do anything with this right triangle, before solving it, I know that the length, one of them is 17.9. This is A and C. You can call it anything. I have 30 degrees. This is 90 degrees, which is given. And the other one, I call it beta. Beta is going to be very easy to find. How much is going to be the beta? 60. 60, correct. Because, you know, first of all, that the sum of all the angles inside the triangle should be 180. One of, if it is a right angle, the rest two of these angles should be 90, that when you add them with this 90 becomes 180. Then beta, we got the first conclusion. Then beta is gonna be 60 degrees. And now, now we are just gonna use some of those ratios that we learned today in order to, uh, solve this triangle and it's going to be this i say okay if i have this right triangle i have the angle and i have the length which is being watched by this angle what i what ratio what trigonometric ratio it reminds you of when i describe it like that i say the angle and the length which is being watched by that angle is given it is reminiscent of what ratio? Sine. Sine, that's correct. Because with the sine, what did I say? With the sine, we said what? We said that when we talk about the sine, let me choose a color. We said that when we talk about the sine, I call that the sine of 30 degrees should equals to what should equals to the length which is being observed and watched by this angle which is going if this angle is watching this length which is going to be 17.9 it can be centimeter meter kilometer anything divided by what divided by the hypothesis of the triangle how much is the hypothesis See, uh, it's 35.8. Oh, you, you get the final answer. No, before we get there, we put the C as whatever it is there. We put, it's going to be C here because I'm trying to build the definition of that ratio for the sine of 30. The sine of the 30, I know it's going to be this. It's going to be the length which being observed by the angle divided by the hypothesis. Hypothesis is not given. Then I put it for C. You can put it A, D, anything. Then 
I can just build up one simple equation. I can say that the C times the sine of 30 equals to what? 17.9, correct? Yes. Then the question is that, guys, how much is going to be the C then? C is going to be this ratio. You divide both sides by sine 30, becomes 17.9 divided by the sine of 30 degrees. I know how much is the sine of the 30 degrees because that's the angle of the reference angles. We talked about that two weeks ago. The angles of 30, 45, and 60, we talked about them as a reference angles and we use for them special triangles to find the value of it. And if you go back to your notes, you see that the sine of the 30, how much was that? Pi over two. That's right. We know that the sine of 30 is gonna be one over two. Then as a result, if I put into this equation, C equals to 17.9 over one over two becomes how much? 35.8 that's right 35.8 then you see that very easy you get an idea that how much is going to be c c is going to be 35.8 and now any questions guys so far no no awesome how no. about gloria philip and ferris Yes, I'm good. Awesome. And now you see that when you got the C, you got the this angle, it's very easy to find the A. You just use a Pythagorean theorem and you you, you subtract, you get the A. It's going to be very easy then. That's right. Then essentially, the focus was using this ratio, but you can just continue to solve for A, use the Pythagorean theorem, as long as you have these two lengths there. Okay, if you have no questions, we just go to the next topic then. Okay, I think I can skip some of that, I should say examples because these are very easy examples. And now we review something very new. If you haven't done that before. Yeah. Now guys, the topic that we're gonna talk right now, then we end the day with that. Then we, when we come back tomorrow, uh, we're going to uh, talk more. Just give me one second. I have to check something. Okay, and now, that's the thing that we just want to talk about that. This is called the co-function of and complements of the, the, the angles that we're going to talk about that. Give me a second. I'm go back to the notes which we had. Guys, in order to explain this one, I'm just going to write the notes like this. I'm going to write the notes as the lesson is going to be about the co... Oh, let me change the color. The co-functions... and complements.
this is going to be the second topic after the topic that we learned, which it was about, um, I should say, uh, solving your right triangle. Okay, now, guys, go back to the previous notes that you had. Now, let me, let me do this one here once more. Let me plot it. It's going to be way better. Okay, it's going to be 90. It's going to be alpha. The same thing, it's going to be beta. And as before, I'm just going to assign this length A. I'm going to assign this length as B. And I'm going to assign the hypothesis as C. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, guys, please listen very carefully. That is a very important lesson. Very important lesson. Okay, now guys, look at this. For this right triangle, which I have the angles alpha and I have the angles beta there, with the length A, B, C, which it means that this is a solved right triangle. Previously, we, we, we know one characteristics. We know two things first, but on the basic knowledge that we have that the sum of all the angle inside is how much? 180, huh? Then as a result, the sum of alpha plus beta should become how much? 90. That's so true. It becomes 90. I put that, uh, I should say, pi over two. Then as a result, we are just going to use this one to move to do two, two cool stuff. First of all, guys, based on the things that we learned, please listen very carefully this part. We talked about the cosine of the alpha. What was the cosine of the alpha? A over C. That's so true. The adjacent divided by the hypothesis. And now, also, look at this one, at the beta angle. I'm just going to find the sine of the beta. How much is the sine of the beta? A over C. Oh, my God. What's happening there? Guys, look at that. In this right triangle, I have sine of this angle matches with the sine of the other angle. You see that? The cosine of this angle is exactly the sine of this angle. You see that? Both of them are A over C. Correct? Yes. You see that? Yes. But what happens if I just want to, based on the definition which I have of the angles, I know what is the, what is the relationship which is relevant between the alpha and beta? What relationship is governing them? It's this relationship, huh? That the sum of them is what? Is 90 degrees or pi over 2. All right? That's the thing that, that we know. Then as a result, if between alpha and beta, the relationship is such a way that the sum of them is going to be 90 degrees, then what do I say? I can say that, okay, then I can express one angle in terms of the other one. Imagine that I can say that beta is going to be what in terms of the alpha? Pi over 2 minus alpha correct yes okay. 
Then, what can I say? Can I say that instead of sine of the beta, I can write this angle. Say, okay, instead of I write sine of the beta, because beta is pi over 2 minus alpha, I write the sine of pi over 2 minus alpha. Because beta is equal to pi over 2 minus alpha. They are the same. Based on this fact, which you know that from many years ago, that the sum of the angles of a triangle is 180, but if that's the right triangle, the sum of these two angles should match to 90 degrees. Then you can always express one angle in terms of the other one. If alpha and beta is 90, alpha, beta can be what? Pi over 2 minus alpha. I take alpha to the other side. So far, so good? Yes. Then I say the sine of the beta, which I define it here on the right triangles ratios before the break, which can be A over C, instead of beta, I can write pi over 2 minus alpha because this relationship is valid. So far, so good? Yes. Then it becomes A over C. You see, these things are the same. I didn't change anything except for the beta, I wrote pi over 2 minus alpha. Guys, there is something very bizarre happening here. Look at the one on the right. Look to this identity, which is the cosine of the alpha, which is A over C, with the sine of the pi over 2 minus alpha, which is A over C. Do you see these two right relationship? I have one, I have two. I have number one, I have number two. They are the same, huh? They have the same value, A over C. Correct? Then I can come here and to conclude something very important, that in a right triangle, the cosine of the alpha, do you see this color? Yes. The cosine of the alpha, equals to the sine of pi over 2 minus alpha, which this is called that the complement rule. It is an important identity that you see that the cosine of one angle equals to sine of its complement. Because we say that if alpha and beta as an angle in the right triangle, their sum becomes pi over two, then we call them angles, which they are complement, they complement each other then. If alpha and beta becomes pi over two. For example, a wife complete, complements his husband. They are like the husband and the wife. When their sum becomes pi over two. But the most important thing of this complement relationship is this identity that the cosine of one angle is equal to the sine of its complement angle that's right any questions no how about the others Gloria Philip Ferris? So, but she had to say, call me. Tight, I don't have to do for you. Tell her. First, you have a question? Oh, you're fine. Uh, Maybe I, I just, if you have some concern, please watch the video. Don't step away. The next example, it may just help you a lot. Just please stay here first. I'm just going to go to the other ratio. I'm just going to still stick to this. 
identity. Okay, do you still see this right triangle? Okay. Now, the thing which I wanna do, now I talked about these two angles, I talked about the fact that the alpha and beta, they are complementing each other. And I talked about the cosine of the alpha. I'm gonna write the same thing for the complement of the sine of the alpha. Exactly the same process. I'm gonna come here to do what? I'm gonna come here to write this ratio. What is the sign? Uh, I talked about the cosine, I'm gonna talk about the sign. Guys, what is the sign of the alpha? Based on this pop, based on this right triangle. C over C. That's right. Sign of the alpha becomes the length which the angle is observing divided by the hypothesis. B over C. Okay. What is the complement angle of the alpha in this right triangle? It's beta, huh? Now, I'm just going to define the cosine of the beta. What is cosine of the beta, this angle? B over C. So true. Guys, look at that. Again, I have the same phenomenon. That look at that B over C and B over C here in both sides. They give you the exact ratio, which it keeps you wonder if you express beta in terms of the alpha, what's gonna happen? What is the beta, guys? Pi over two minus alpha, huh? Then you write cosine of alpha beta equals to pi over two minus alpha which is still B over C because it's still, it represents the alpha, the beta. And these two again are the same. Then as a result, when you see equation number one and equation number two, they are giving you the same value, B over C and B over C, it means that they are the same. They are the same then you can come to say that then as a result, the sine alpha should equal to the cosine of pi over two minus alpha. You see that? Yes. Then, then what is the conclusion that we can draw today from the lesson that we learned is that when you look at the right triangle, we call alpha and beta angles that complement each other. But there is a very interesting property for them, as you showed that on the paper, that the sine of one angle equals to the cosine of the other, or cosine of the one equals to the sine of the others. Right? And also, the same thing is valid if you want to define the tangent and cotangent. You say that, I'm just gonna leave that for you as a homework to do that. You can also show that on a right triangle, the tangent of the alpha equals the cotangent of the beta, or cotangent of the alpha equals the tangent of the beta. These complements angle they have this swapping property of their trigonometric ratios. Isn't that interesting? Yes. Awesome. Now, any questions, guys, before we just solve an example? No. Nobody has a question? How about Gloria Philly first? No. No? Okay. 
Okay, if you have no questions, uh, let me, we talk about these, uh, I'm going to give you the list of the table of these identities uh, tomorrow, but let's solve this example. Just going to write it as an example. How much time do we have, guys? 15. 15 minutes. Okay. I think that's enough for to finish the session by. Oh, just by the way, Rose, do you want me to talk to your teacher because you just spent half of the class in my period? Uh, it's okay because the time is work period. So I don't have to. Oh, you don't have a class for the first period. Okay. Yes. Awesome. Okay, now. Okay, guys, I'm just going to give you this example. I say that the sign of 15 degree equals to hmm, one, uh, one over two square root of uh, two minus square root of three. Interesting question, really. And if we just want to find how much is that for from this, I'm going to ask you to find the exact value of 4 cosine squared of 75 degree. Interesting question. Everyone can see what I have written? Yes. And please spend two or three minutes on it, then we solve it together. I give it uh, more two minutes. Okay, let me do that. Who, who is done? Me. Okay, you're done. Okay, that's great. Okay, let's, let's do that together. Then we should be done for the day. Guys, look at this one. I have... Uh, I'm going to talk about the complements, the angles which they are complement of each other. Okay, and now for this question, look at that. I have sine of 15 degrees and I'm talking about the cosine of the 75 degrees. But first of all, 75 degrees plus 15 degrees, how much it becomes? 90 degrees. 90 degrees, which it means that 75 degrees and 15 degrees, they're like a husband and wife. They complement each other then. 
Then in a right triangle, the sine of one equals the cosine of the other. That's right. Then I can start by saying like that. To say that the sine of 15 degrees, it's essentially the sine of Ninety degrees minus seventy five degrees, correct? Because ninety minus seventy five becomes how much? Fifteen, huh? Yes. That's right. Which essentially based on the thing which you learned right now. Look at that, you still this is here. That the sign of an alpha equals the cosine of pi over 2, which is 90 minus alpha, which you will see that this relationship, this is there. We constructed the same exact thing, which equals to what? To the cosine of 75 degrees. That's the starting point. Correct? Yes. And I know that the sine of 50 degrees should equal to the cosine of 75 degrees because they are a complement of each other then. 75 at 15 degrees. And now, how much is the sine of 15? Because I know that, because I know that the sine of 50 degrees equals to, to the cosine of 75 degrees, correct? I proved it over there. Can I make them to the power two? Yes. That's right. Then it becomes what? I'm trying to construct the same thing which I have done there. If I take them to the power two, because they are the same equality, then the sine of 50 degrees to the power two. Wait, what time is it? 103. 103, we have seven minutes left. Okay, power sine squared becomes cosine squared after 75. And at the end, I can just to choose to what? To multiply both sides to four. Okay, then becomes what? Becomes four times sine squared of 15 degrees becomes four times of cosine squared of 75 degrees, right? Yes. Okay, and now that's the thing which we are looking for. How much is four times of cosine squared of 75 degrees? Which it says that it has to be four times of sine squared of 15. But sine squared of 15 is how much? One over two square root of two minus square root of three. That's right. Then it goes to the power two, becomes four times cosine squared of 75 that we were looking for, correct? And now it becomes very easy. You just put them to the power two, then becomes four times two minus the square root of three equals four times cosine squared of 75 degrees there, correct? Yes? Yes. Awesome. Any questions? No. No. Okay. Tomorrow we're going to talk more about that. But, uh, uh, but in the meantime, please remember that uh, if you have any questions tomorrow, it's going to be the final day that we cover about these type of right triangles. And tomorrow, guys, probably uh, I'm going to give the final confirmation today from 920 to 950, one of the students who got the admission to top university here with the average of 96 percent uh he's going to come to talk to about his experience in uh i should say in this program then then if you want uh join us tomorrow from 9 20 into my advanced class advanced advanced function class then and that's pretty much everything anybody has a question no no okay if you have no questions, guys, uh, I see you all tomorrow then by the class. Then. But don't forget about tomorrow if you are interested to show up by the class. Okay. Okay.
Awesome. If you have no questions, see you all tomorrow. Bye. Bye, Rose. Bye, Gloria. Bye. Bye, Gloria.